it's interesting that because I'm not, I would say that I'm not naturally a very self-aware person. Like I don't naturally know what I'm feeling in, in real time. It usually kind of takes me a minute to think about things. But one thing that has helped me is listening to other people's stories. Mm. Because when you listen to other people, you start to hear yourself in their stories. So mm. like I listened to Alanis Morissette's audiobook recently. And I was just like, oh, wait, there's so many things that she said, because she's years ahead of me. She's already gone on a path that I'm, you know, I'm lo looking up to someone like her mm -hmm. and listening to her story. I'm able to put language to things in my story. So I honestly think that's probably the most practical way that I can explain it is I, I read a lot of stories. I listen to a lot of podcasts and audiobooks, And, you know, with what I do with my art, I'm receiving a lot of stories too. And I think the more we listen, the more we realize like, oh, wait a second, there's literally other people who've already figured out the same thing that I'm trying to figure out in my, in my career or in my life. So yeah. It's yeah. interesting well, you, you talk about <laughs> listening to each other because a lot of your poetry comes from listening to the stories um, that people mm -hmm. send you and you turn that into poems, right? Yes, yes, yeah. So kind of going back to, you know, I mentioned the thread about music and how I discovered on the road that I really liked that moment at the merch table where I was able to talk to mm -hmm. someone just one-on-one. -on -one. I was like, whatever that is, I want more of that. So it took a few years to figure out exactly what it was. But in 2017, I had started sharing some of my poetry and then I would get Instagram DMs of people similar experience where someone would say, Hey, I read your poem and here's what I'm going through. And here's how this poem, I connected with it. And it was always in that moment that I felt the most creative. It was in that moment. I felt the most inspired to make something. I was like, when I'm just sitting at home in my room painting, yeah, I'll get inspired here and there, but usually self-doubt kicks in or I get hungry and I'm just like, whatever, I'll get back to it later. But I was like, it's something about talking to that person, even though it's over DM, like, I was like, that is igniting something in me. So I posted on my Instagram story in October of 2017. I said, hey, if you would like for me to write something as a response to your story, just send me a DM. I was like, I won't share your story. I'll just respond to you with art, with poetry, and then I'll share it with everyone else. And um, within 24 hours, I had hundreds of messages from people from all over the world, people I did not know, people who didn't follow me. They didn't know what I did. They were just like, hey, I heard you're just opening up for people to share their stories. And I just need somewhere to share my story. And I thought that I would do that project for like a week or two, but here we are four years later and I'm still doing that. And yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what my creative practice would look like without that. Like I, I have to keep that one-on-one -on -one as a part of it. Like it's, cause it makes it real. It's hard when you get to followers and big numbers because it's, you know, you can't, you can't connect with a crowd of people like you can with one person right. at a time. Yeah. So yeah, in some capacity, I feel like that is always going to be a part of, you know, what I do. <laughs> right. I find that so interesting that some people create and then they project it at an audience, but you literally took in the stories of the audience and turned that into art. And in some ways you brought everybody along in the journey and you connected that thread of, um, of the commonality in people. And I feel like that's something as artists we need to do more is like listen to actually what's happening in our world versus trying yeah. to tell people and project what we think, but it's more about inviting people into the conversation. And I love that you did that. That's just such a Thank you. Thing. I Thank love you. That. Yeah. And I love that you said conversation. I think that's a huge part of it. It's, it's what we make is a part of a conversation. So mm -hmm. how can we make something that, that joins in on, on, on a conversation that's already happening out there in the world, or if it's a conversation that you think needs to be had in the world. So yeah, super important. So this yeah, decision to, to respond to stories ended up really resonating and, and growing into something that now you, you know, get to do in a way that I'm sure you had no idea when you first started. Now, before we talk about some of the new challenges and opportunities that came with that increased attention, 
Um, I got a really cool question in the Q&A here that I think ties into the beginning steps of something new. Um, so Karina says, I often struggle with imposter syndrome. Do you have any advice on how to practice bravery and take creative risks? Much love from Surrey, BC. So when you're starting something new, you don't really feel like it's your place to be the one giving voice to it. What, what motivates you to take that step? Yeah, that's such a good question. So I'll give you sort of like a practical, the way I did it. So I, my name is Morgan and I share my work as Morgan Harper Nichols. That was not always the case. I actually did not start sharing a bulk of what I did as Morgan Harper Nichols. I would actually like create a random blog or a random mm -hmm. Instagram page that didn't have my name on it. And I would start sharing there because I dealt with that. I was like, I don't feel like I can have the courage or the <laughs> motivation to, to share as myself. That was very hard for me. And I've, and I've spent a lot of time thinking about that because I think like, let's take Instagram for an example. And I think it applies to Facebook as well. It is very hard to create when your grandma, your college roommates, your neighborhood childhood friends, your uncle, your cousin, your best friend are all following you. Like, they're not the same audience of people. <laughs> right. So, yeah, it's really hard to figure out, like, when you have people, even if you have 10 followers, and those are your 10 followers, you know, grandma, uncle, school teacher, all those, like, that's a really hard group of mm -hmm. people to try, like, what? I don't know what to say. So instead, find something that you actually do feel a little bit more comfortable to talk about. So if you're really into a particular subgenre of anime or using a certain kind of camera lens, like, okay, I can talk about that. You know, <laughs> there's less pressure because I use that every day. I care about that every day. So just start a YouTube channel that doesn't have your name on it. And it's just about that thing. And then you can use what you learn there to then someday, if you want to go and use like your name or like create a bigger brand around it, if that makes sense. So that's just sort of my path that I took because I, my husband, for instance, he's, he's dealing with a similar thing because he's very creative, but he hasn't, he didn't have like the same like encouragement growing up that I did to like create and share things. And he's like, I just don't know. I don't feel qualified. I was like, yeah, well, just start a TikTok that doesn't even have your name on it and just talk about this one random specific thing. And he wants to talk about starting a small business and don't worry about everybody else right now. <laughs> like mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about how it's going to translate to Facebook and how it's going to turn into your Netflix series. Like, don't worry about that. Just one thing at a time and, and you'll gradually gain more confidence as you go. Yeah, I That's love that answer. Idea. It's funny because I was actually going to ask you to speak to the creators listening. What would be your advice? But you just gave it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just gave There's it. There's so think, much overlap. <laughs> yeah, I think it's important because we've been doing, you know, these clubhouses, um, and a lot of people in those chats are talking about creating the art that inspires you the most, and not worrying about um, what others think, and mm -hmm. um, getting trapped in that way where we're only creating for likes or for the approval of people. And I think that what you did is such a, a great way. Obviously, we're not all going to be amazing poets like yourself, but um, the ability to stop and go, what's my voice sound like? And how do I want to share it with this community of people? And I think if we create from that place, it's going to be so much healthier than, yeah. being, you know, having almost a forced hand. So true. Yeah, and we have to remember that because it's just the 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 race is never going to stop. There's always going to be a new app that you have to download, a new feature that you have to learn. Like I, I thought it was so funny. Like with with TikTok, I was like, I don't have time to learn TikTok. Like I'm too old for that. And then then you have Instagram Reels. I'm like, oh, well, you can't escape it. You got to. <laughs> so there's always going to be Look like you. one way. Yeah, and it's exhausting. So for me, I'm like. I have to find other things that, that motivate me that are not that, like, I'm curious about those things and I'll try them, but they're not the heart of what I do. They're not my motivation. Like my motivation is connecting with people. And if we some kind of way end up circling back to the old school forums, the BB forums that anybody could have, and, <laughs> and that's how we end up connecting, then that's great too.